So with proper planning, a retiree can keep their tax bill as low as possible during retirement. And to discuss some ways to develop an efficient tax plan, joining me is Michelle Gessner in Houston, Texas. Uh, Michelle, welcome back. What are, you, what are some of the most common tax planning pitfalls you see in your practice? Yeah, so people assume that they'll be in a lower tax bracket after they stop working. For some people that, that could be true, but it's not always the case. For people who saved a lot of money in their tax deferred accounts such as an IRA or a 401k, that money has never been taxed. So when they go to take it out, their entire withdrawal will be taxable on their tax return. I like to refer to these accounts as ticking tax bombs because that's what they are. Once they turn age 72, they'll have required minimum distributions or RMDs and those RMDs will force them to withdraw a sizable amount of money each year, and that amount may thrust them into a higher tax bracket. If you add to that the rising income tax rates that we expect in the future, we've got a problem. We know that the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 expires at the end of 2025. So in the year 2026, tax rates will revert to 2017 levels, or they may even rise higher than that. Our country's deficit levels are already dramatically high, and as interest rates go up, the interest on the national debt will skyrocket, along with the Social Security and Medicare costs that the government must bear. All of these are large line items in the federal budget. Tax rates have to go up, uh, especially after the stimulus package that we needed to, in response to the pandemic. If you visit usdebtclock.org, you'll understand what I'm talking about. The national debt is already at $28 trillion. So somebody has to pay for that. And revenues are not rising as fast as spending. So it's very likely that tax rates will rise. So now with tax rates looking like they have no place else to go but up, what should people be doing now to protect themselves? So in order to protect your nest egg, there are some important steps that you can take right now. Every household is different, and so it's not one size fits all. So the first step that we take with our clients is running an analysis to project what their money will look like in retirement at age 72 and all the way through their age 95. Then we run another scenario where we increase tax rates to see what happens. And a third scenario is run that includes some strategies such as managed and carefully planned Roth conversions, along with some other important tax efficient strategies. So we can pay the taxes now and keep all the growth on that account. And you can have too much of a good thing with Roth conversions. So you really shouldn't try to do these things all by yourself and guess. You really need a professional who can help you with all the factors to consider. Because a Roth conversion will cause your Medicare rates to go up and it really does matter how you pay the taxes due and which accounts you convert. People think they can do this alone, but then they make mistakes and then they come to me to clean it, you know, help them clean it up. Um, with some people, it is possible to get to a zero tax bracket in retirement and pay zero tax on their social security benefits. Not everybody, but it does happen. And what about the tax impact of the SECURE Act? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so the SECURE Act was passed at the very end of 2019, and the good parts received a lot of media attention, but there was very little discussion about the part that's not so good. The, the SECURE Act eliminated what a lot of people refer to as the stretch IRA, and, and the stretch IRA is an informal term that describes what used to be the tax treatment of the inherited IRA. So before the SECURE Act, for an example, when you and your spouse pass away and you leave an IRA to your, your child, that child would, would have, in the past, they'd have required minimum distributions that would be small enough to stretch the contents of that IRA over their lifetime. Well, that's now been eliminated. So now, what's gonna happen? If you leave an IRA balance to your child, that child is now forced to take all that money out remove it all from the account within 10 years after your death. So there are some big tax implications for your child. Every withdrawal is taxed fully because that money has never been taxed. So your child will now have that withdrawal added to their own tax return. And it's, the child is likely to be thrust into a much higher tax bracket, if not the top tax bracket, depending on how much money they have to withdraw. 
which means they will lose a sizable chunk of that money to taxes. As an example, if you left a million dollars to your child in an IRA, and you die when that child is in, the, uh, in their 40s, and let's say in the, in the height of their career, they will already very likely be in a higher tax bracket. Now they have to have that $1 million removed from that account within 10 years of your death. The best case scenario is they take out equal amounts over 10 years, which is $100,000 each year. So now they have an extra $100,000 added to their tax return which will likely push them to the top tax bracket. So that means about 40% of that money is now going straight to the IRS. This is a great advantage for the IRS, but not for you and your family. And, and this part of the SECURE Act is actually written into the revenue code. So you need to know about this. So is there anything that people can do now to avoid losing so much of their money to the SECURE Act with regard to the changes made to the inherited IRAs? So yes, so there is something that people can do. They can start repositioning their money now. So they can use the Roth conversion strategies that we, we talked about, but for money that they really don't need to tap into during their lifetime, they can use what's called a Section 7702 plan. Um, and that's otherwise known as life insurance because life insurance is very tax friendly. So you can take some of the IRA money out each year, pay the taxes at today's rates, then use that money to put into life insurance. Then the money is not only turned into income tax free money for the children when you pass away, but it'll be two to four times more than what you paid into the life insurance technique or uh, policy. So this is, this is a, a, a way to a very popular way right now to offset the impact of the SECURE Act. And it's also perfect for funding a trust because of its tax-free nature. My guest has been Michelle Gessner in Houston, Texas. Thanks for watching Retirement News Online.